Hi, so today we're going to be working on low poly grass, flowers and tree leaves and you can see the sort of scene I'm setting up here. So in order to create these hand painted assets you'll need to use a paint program. You can use Blender but it's much easier in a program like Critter or Photoshop. So here we are in Critter. It could just as easily be Photoshop. The main thing you're looking for is uh, the layers and make sure you have a transparent layer in the background. Can you see how I've got this checkered pattern all in the background. I'm working on a PNG but if you start a new file uh, make sure it's got the alpha so RGB alpha. Photoshop comes with that automatically and with Critter you've got two layers here and you just make the background transparent so turn it off and then whatever I draw on here this will come out transparent in Blender. So if I go back to my flowers you can see they're fairly basic uh, but I'm just testing out some techniques. Uh, what I'm going to work with is this one here and this one here and I'll show you how I'm going to put those together in Blender now. Okay so here I am back in Blender and what I'm going to need to do is bring in my image. Okay so I'll go back to solid mode. There's a nice easy way to do this because there's a nice add-on so let's go file, user preferences and add-ons. It comes with the latest versions of Blender and you type in image and it's import images as planes. It's been around for a while so let's save the user settings and come out of there. Okay so now when I press add or shift A mesh I get images as planes so that's shift A to add images as planes and I can now choose my image with the alpha channel. Now I can't see anything as yet uh, what I will need to do is look at rendered view so if I come down here and look at rendered you can see it's got all my images in one. If I go to textured view it will show the alpha as black and that's useful to us because it renders instantly. So let's zoom into this object. I'm going to bring out a new screen for my node editor and a new screen for my UV image editor. So let's change this one to the UV image editor and this one to the node editor. And the great thing about this is it has set up the nodes for me. So I'll very briefly explain what's happening. But first I'll get my image up over here so it is flowers hand painted too. There's my image that I showed you in Photoshop. So it's connecting up to a color, color to the color, diffuse, and into a mix shader. And the mix shader has the color and transparent. And this is controlled by the alpha channel. Bit confusing, but there it is for you in case you need it. But if you use the images as planes add-on, uh, then it will bring it in for you. But we need to resize this. So if we go into edit mode with tab, I've now got my image set out here. Here are the four corners and here are the different vertices as you can see. So if I want to use uh, this long flower here, I can scale it down, bring it across. Can you see my image changing over here? And if I scale it up in the Y, and we're pretty much there as you can see. Now if I scale it in the Z axis, we have back into rendered mode, rendered mode down here, or shift Z is the shortcut, you can see now I've got my flower. So wherever I move this, that's what we'll be showing. But obviously I'll have to resize it for the other flowers. You can see I've done it for the flowers here, and I've done the same thing over here, but just changed the color slightly. There's a couple of things I'm gonna show you first before I do that. So back to textured mode with shift Z. Shift Z will take you back to the mode you were in earlier and I'm in texture. So what I'm going to do whilst in edit mode, I'm going to duplicate this, shift D to duplicate and just move it out slightly so you can see I've got a duplicate there and scale it in the Z axis. Um, about there, scale a little bit taller and then rotate in the Z axis and actually it's a bit fat so I'm going to scale in the X axis, there we go. And now what I'm going to do with this is get my UV. So the UVs I've got selected are the UVs for this uh, new plane that I've created. And if I scale this in the Y axis and move this up, I can then select just the top. So if I scale it in the Z axis again, and I don't want this stalk here. The reason I'm doing another plane and making it smaller is so we don't have two stalks sticking out. It will look a bit strange. I want this top bit. So if I move around, I can see it from different angles. You'll see what I mean in a second. So let's scale this in the Y. 
that's about right, that's looking good. And I'll scale this one into Z. And there's the middle. Now if I press Shift Z, you can see it's kind of solid at the front. And it's a bit fat, so it looks a bit chunky. These ones look a little bit better, but you get the idea. Now if I want to change the color of these, you see I've changed the color of them over here. What I can do, I can come into my node editor. I can add Shift A and then colors. I can add, I mean you can just colorize it slightly with the RGB curves, but hue and saturation you can really change the colors. So if I bring that in and put it between my colors, my color nodes there and there, I can then skip across this and you can see it changing the colors. Now because I've inserted this image plane before, it's using my texture I've used before and changing the color of everything, which I don't want. So I'm going to undo that. Okay, so we're back to normal. What I would need to do is create a new texture. So if I click over here and add a new, that will keep my nodes where they are and I'll call it something different. Now when I add my hue and saturation node, when I change it, it only affects that one. And that's obviously the one I used earlier. Quite like that actually, it works nicely. It's a good idea to put your images onto one map and then just move your UVs around as needed. Game engines and Blender and 3D programs prefer this, then it only has to bring up one map rather than several, which takes more time. What I'm going to show you now is how I did the trees. So if I go to the actual tree alpha, which I think is here, you can see, let's click on the tree and go to edit mode. You can see I've got lots of sections to it. I've actually joined them together, but you can see they're just planes inserted. And if I go into edit mode, you can see the topology. It's a cube that's been subdivided a few times and turned into a bowl. And if I click on just that by pressing L, you can see that shape there. I've got a slightly darker one for underneath it. And these bits are these bits down here. So they're sort of hanging bits. And these bits are edges. So you can see them sort of sticking out. And if I go to rendered mode, you've got those bits sticking out. These bits are just the, the leaf by itself. And they're just planes. Uh, the bits hanging down, these bits. And there's two bowls there, one underneath the other. So it's got some sort of shading underneath it. And that's how I created the tree. Hopefully I've explained everything there. And lastly I'll show you the grass alphas that I've been making. There they are. Nice simple grass, hand drawn, using the same techniques. So there we are. That's how you can create hand painted low poly grass assets and leaves and flowers. I'll eventually be putting these all onto the Unity Asset Store and maybe in other places. So you can use my image alphas in your own projects and you can help support me and my channel. So watch out for links and thanks for watching. I hope this helps.